Oh, trash. Hey everyone, uh, so this is a special segment to introduce this video. I'm up here in Massachusetts visiting my family and I thought that I would introduce my sister. Hi everyone, how are you this evening? Uh, she's uh, Stacy Parsons, obviously, um, and she is the executive director of Head Start up here in Massachusetts. So I thought uh, it would be fun if you met her and uh, I'm going to give her... The, 15 seconds here um, to tell my students uh, something about me that they should know. And remember that I have editing power. Oh. I only have 15 seconds? And now you're down to 10. What? Um, major Superman fan. They know um, that. Used to make a mean face as a kid and be like, ah, and it was kind of ridiculous. Um... What else did you do that they should know about? I don't know. You're down to your last couple seconds here. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm disappointing you. I'll mes message you all later. I don't know what to tell you. No ridiculous stories for him? I mean, there's a lot of them. I mean, the bucket on your head and your, your nerd, being able to speak Latin, interrupting church because you have a story about the Corinthians. All right. So anyway, uh, now we're on to the math, and I hope everyone enjoyed meeting my sister. Good luck with this one. This this lesson's really amazing. You're gonna enjoy it. So hopefully have she'll a be, good one. She'll be back uh, in coming seg segments. Hopefully when I'm recording over the weekend. <laughs> so these are notes on systems of linear inequalities. Um, so. There are systems of linear inequalities, uh, just like there are with just equations. So we are going to uh, work on systems of linear inequalities. Um, so by the end, you're going to be able to solve them. Now, inequalities uh, are things like greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. So I'm going to start by making a table uh, to help you guys with the shading because there's a lot of shading, just like we did the arrows, um, where it was like less than or greater than. So um, now we just break it down. So y is greater than or equal to. Okay, that's going to be a solid line shaded above the line. So I'll show you some examples. If it's a, a positive slope, okay, um, it, a negative slope, there's going to be a, a zero slope, and there's going to be a no slope. So the zero slope, remember, is something like y equals, and undefined or no slope is something like x equals. So I'm going to make this table. Uh, it might help to copy this down. So solid line, draw a line like normal, and I shade it above the line. So y is greater than is above. Okay. Negative lines, okay, they slope down, but I still shade above it. Uh, zero and undefined are actually easier. Uh, zero, just above, okay, and undefined are the vertical lines. So, which are the greater? The greater numbers are to the right. Y is less than or equal to? That is still a solid line because it's equal to. I remember that's like the closed dot, um, but it, now it's shaded below the line. So it's like the reverse of the one above it. So again, positive, I shade below. Negative, I'm going to shade below. And it's just going to be the reverse of that. If you think of it as uh, open and closed circles, remember the equals to the greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Those are the closed circles, which means they're solid, okay? And uh, when we get down to the bottom ones, okay, where it's just y is greater than or y is less than, um, that means that it's going to be a dashed line or an open circle. So the dashed line is the only thing that changes, okay? The shading is all determined by the greater than or the less than. So again, the dash line is just lies! dashes. It's all lies! I got it. <laughs> 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 
So it shaded below. Um, and that's the only thing that changes, okay, is the dashed line, okay, it's not filled in all the way, and then we still shade it above, okay, negative, dashed line, okay, and shade above, okay. Um, a lot of kids find it easy to work in pencil here because they can just draw the line in and then erase different sections, um, and then it's dashed or it's solid, okay. And then the, uh, the y is less than, exactly like the y is less than or equal to, only it's a dashed line shaded below. And it's the same process. So now I go back up to this uh, graph and I locate the inequality. Again, it's in y equals mx plus b form. That's how we graph. Okay, that's where I'm going to begin graphing. Okay, that's my rise over run, the m. And then I identify the inequality. So that inequality is y is less than. So it's going to be a solid line shaded below because y is less than. Okay, so then I go negative 2. I go down three over one, or up three to the left one. I make that solid line, and I shade it below, okay? So below is going to be to the left of it. I'm just gonna shade that in with red. The next couple of examples are just uh, the y equals, okay? That's that horizontal line. Okay, so I just go up to four. I'm going to draw a dashed line because it's less than, okay? And then I'm going to shade below it because it's less than. The second one is an x equals line, which means it's going to be a vertical line, okay? Uh, and it's solid because it's greater than or equal to. So I'm going to go over on the x one. I'm going to draw that line and then I'm going to shade to the greater than side. The third one is a little bit different because it's written in a in a weird way. But if I flip this around it's going to be y is greater than or equal to 3x. So I keep the alligator eating the y. Okay, It's going to be a solid line shaded above. The y-intercept, because I don't see one, Okay, it's going to be plus 0. So it's going to start at 0, or the origin. And all I'm going to do is go up 3 over 1. I can also reverse that direction to get a third point. Draw that, and I'm going to shade above that. The next example, oh, I can also check these, okay, by choosing a point, okay? If I choose a point, I can choose any point I want. So let's say negative one, one, okay? I can take that and I can plug that into the equation. So one equals three times negative one. So it's one is greater than or equal to negative three. Is that true? Yes, so that's where I would shade. That side of the line is where I would shade. But let's say I take uh, 1, 1, okay? I plug that into the same equation, and I get 3 times 1. So I get 1 is greater than or equal to 3. That's not true. So you see how that side's not shaded, but the true side was shaded? That's also another way I can check that. Uh, and then the second example is systems of inequalities. So systems, again, two or more, okay? So all I'm gonna do is graph the two, like I did uh, with graphing systems of equations, and I'm gonna see where the shading overlaps. So it's very key 
uh, if you have it available, to use colored pencils or different colored uh, something to see where they overlap. So the first equation is going to be a solid line shaded below. So I'm going to plot that one. Negative 1, go up 2, over 1, make a point. I can make a few more. And draw that line. Hopefully yours is a little straighter than mine. Okay, and I'm going to shade below that. So I'm not going to shade very dark. Um, I'm just going to make a few marks on that so I know that is shaded that way. This one is going to be shaded above, and it's going to be dashed because it's not equal to. Okay, so I'm going to start at 2, and then the x over 3 me really means 1 over 3. Okay, so I can do that a couple times, get a few points. Okay, again, I'm not searching for a specific point. I'm looking for where the shading overlaps. So if you look, I'm going to shade this above this line, and I look for where the red and the blue are going to overlap. And it's in this small little section. So that's the section that I'm going to really darken in. And if you have a third color, you can use that. But it's in this section that that is overlapping. And that is the solution. It's not a specific point. It's a region. Okay. In this uh, equation, the one thing uh, I have to do is solve for y. These are not in y equals mx plus b. So the reason why I, I chose this example is I have to remember to subtract the x on both sides. Okay, get the x on the other side. And remember there's a negative 2, that minus 2y, that negative stays with the y. And when I divide by that negative, I divide all of it. And when I divide by a negative, I have to flip the inequality. Okay, that's an oftentimes the biggest mistake that people make is they don't flip the inequality. And uh, it's because they either drop the negative or they just forget to flip it. And I saw that in the Algebra 1 Skills Unit review. So now it's going to be y is less than negative divided by negative, okay, is a positive, 1 half x minus 3. So that's 6 divided by negative 2. So I can plot that. Now it's going to be shaded below, and it's going to be dashed. So I'm going to just draw that line. I'm going to dash it and shade it below. The second equation, again, I have to solve for y. But in this case, I'm not going to have to flip the inequality. So, always give yourself a little bit of room to work with it. I'm going to subtract the x like I did the last time. I'm going to be left with a positive 4y. That plus 4 means it's positive. I'm going to write it as negative x minus 4. I'm going to divide by a positive 4. And when I divide by a positive, I don't have to flip the inequality. So it's still less than. And it's going to be a negative 1 fourth x minus 1. So now I can plot that in as a dashed line shaded below. Now where they overlap is a little bit of a bigger region. And you see that it's that section where it's the red and the green overlapping. So I'm going to shade that in a lot darker. And you can see that that is the feasible region. So that is uh, something that you need to watch out for, is the dividing by a negative. Okay? So this is solving systems of linear inequalities. So now you can uh, try the practice. And make sure you check the answers before you move on. All right, thank you.